Well, in the film in 5D, they show the colors of everything film with the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammock, and this week we talk about achieving the film look with your DSLR using Magic Bullet looks. You know, I thought we did a Magic Bullet thing already. Yeah, we did. Usually I talk about After Effects, though. This time I'm just going to use Magic Bullet looks because I'm lazy. It's my favorite color correction program. It's really easy to get like the film look because they have all like these film presets and stuff. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that in a second. Alright, so this week, I get around to answering another viewer question from a few weeks back. Mike's FP wanted to know how I achieved the Inception look for a sketch I did a few months ago. Now, I've talked about grading in previous episodes, so here I'll talk about achieving the film look and how to match a look of a particular film. Let me say that first and foremost, you should do some research, like what camera movie was shot on, and if it was shot on film, what type of film it was shot on, and what treatment it got. Sites like IMDB are great for finding information like this. For example, I know that Inception was shot at 24 frames per second, and it was shot on film with an aspect ratio of 2.35. This is information that you should find out before you even start filming. Now obviously, most films are shot on 24 frames per second, but you also want to make sure that your shutter speed is appropriate. 1 50th is ideal for DSLR shooting 24 FPS. And aspect ratio is another thing you'll want to know, or your framing could be potentially way off. If you want to learn more about aspect ratio, check out this episode. Once we have these things figured out, along with lighting and exposure levels, we can then share our footage and bring it into post, where we'll try to match color as best as possible. But first, we have another promo. I found this show, Film in 5D, I think it was called. I learned many things. I can now use the picture camera to film my children. Now, I wish to learn more. May you teach me more? Please, I... I beg of you. You come to me on the day that my daughter should be married? You have a daughter? You come... to ask me a favor? Yes, please. More film in 5D episodes. You disgust me. You ask for more episodes, yet when I ask you the simple favor of voting for your favorite sketch on Facebook, you do nothing? God, Father, please! Go to facebook.com forward slash film in 5D right now and vote for your favorite sketch. And my favorite, I mean the Godfather in 5D, that it's clearly the best one. Yes, I'll go there right away. Good, good, good. And while you're there, like our Facebook page and leave a comment on our wall. On August 6th, the one year anniversary of Film in 5D, three sketches will be chosen for an in-depth look behind the scenes with the cast and crew. But is this your favorite sketch? And we're back. So if you haven't noticed, we're showing a promo for past sketches every week. Head on over to our Facebook page where we currently have a poll for your favorite sketches of the first year of Film in 5D. Please take the time to vote for your favorite sketch, because on August 6th we'll be celebrating one year of filming in 5D and giving some behind the scenes footage from the top 3 sketches, as well as some insight from the cast and crew. But now it's time to jump on over to Premiere and color correct our footage. Alright, so here we are in Premiere Pro, my favorite editing program. Now usually I show you guys color correction tips in After Effects, but I really like the new layout of Premiere Pro. I really like, you know, let me show you just real quick. Um, I believe they had this before, but it's just, it's so much better now. The the tabs are so much better, you, more, less chrome, more image, more media, and so I really like it. This is really good if you're just working in Premiere, you don't have Magic Bullet looks, so you just work in Premiere, and obviously you got your source footage here. This is uh, the actual Inception. Now this, I actually used this more for um, framing and pacing and stuff like that, rather than color correction because the quality was so low. I actually used a high quality image, like a 1920 by 1080 image from this like exact frame to match up my color, um, but we're not going to look at that today. Uh, right here, over here we have our program source monitor, our program monitor, and this is what we see in our timeline. And down below we have the reference, and right now it's exactly the same, but if we make sure that getting to program monitor is off, which it is, we can go ahead and scrub through. and we can see another or a later frame from that same scene. This is great for if you're shooting out in the sun and, it's cl and there's a cloud in the sky, maybe the cloud passes over. 
the color correction is dramatically going to change so you kind of want to find a happy medium in this case it was an overcast day and i've talked about this in the past you definitely want to go for shooting on an overcast day in my opinion just more even lighting more warm uh, more room to work with in post you know in terms of getting the look you want so yeah but uh this definitely helps to make sure that it's even throughout your entire clip um and then let's look over let's go back to my workspace because i'm actually going to be using looks uh, one thing i wanted to show you and this is something new i found out but i'm i'm sure every editing program can do this make sure you have your track selected and your uh and video track too selected like this and obviously the track that you want to match frame and i'm going to hit f and this will match frame to your source footage so if you have you know, huge project. Obviously, this isn't too big, but this is, you know, a minute and a half long. And if I wanted to know where this clip went, then I could just hit F and it'll give me that clip, the original source clip. And I can go ahead and bring it into another project, you know, bring it back in, maybe trim it a little bit better, whatever I want to do. In this case, it helps me show you, you know, the raw footage versus the color corrected footage. So, this is what we're going for right now in this tutorial, and this is what we started out with. Um, as you can see, this is very we're gonna go over to the test one. This is very flat. This is shot in Technicolor Cine style, which I love using specifically for getting a film look. I mean, it gives you a lot of room. Look, it's like completely even lighting. I can go any way I want with this, and that's kind of what you want to go for. I've talked about that in the past, so let's just go ahead. Let's go ahead and jump in to Magic Bullet Looks. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it there. And the thing about I like about Magic Bullet Looks is that you get all these presets. You get 100 presets, and you go ahead and click, you know, play, and you can sit here for you know five, ten minutes, and you can look at every single look and how it looks with your with your clip. Now you don't get the benefit of having another source monitor, so you'll you'll need to have multiple screens so you can see which one's going to match up best with your Inception shot, but or whatever look you're going for. But this is a great starting off point. Um, I actually went ahead and I found one. It was a it was a stock emulation. Let me see if I can find it. Right here. It was a stock emulation number 85. And you don't want to just you don't want to just put this on here and say, "Oh, okay, I'm done," and then click finish. Because if you do that, you're gonna have <laughs> more than likely you're going to have the same look as somebody else on one of their films because everybody i mean i'm pretty sure you know you can find you can get quick looks for free or something or it comes you can get on b and h for free i got it for free anyways um and everybody has access to these 100 presets so if you just use this preset then you're more than likely going to have the exact same look as somebody else and that's not what you want to want you want to kind of be an original and customize it and stuff obviously I am looking going for the inception look so if this happened to be exactly like the inception look then I'd probably use it but in this case it's not so we're gonna go ahead and adjust it uh, the first thing I start off with is the saturation now because this is a preset it already knows that it needs to be desaturated I click here obviously that's saturated and desaturated and I'm not I like actually like the the saturated look looks better to me but unfortunately when you're going for the film look film degrades the quality of your video if you have a digital camera i don't care what anybody says you have to degrade the quality of your digital camera to make it look like film and until people stop using film then we won't have to do this anymore but for now if you want to trick your audience into believing that they're watching a movie in the theaters on youtube then you're going to have to desaturate so i actually desaturate a little more it's at 78 percent right now i'll go ahead and go down to 74 that 25 to 30 percent desaturation range that i've talked about before and that's you know looking more film like to me not necessarily better more film like let's head on over to the contrast right here and it's not th this is way too flat right now i need to bump this up it's actually negative contrast so i'm going to go ahead and go to 0.17 is good let's t check that out way better um let's go on over to the color ranges and you know what that's not doing that much over here if you look at the red it's bumping up the the blue a little bit and lowering the red even out a little bit more but I don't know that I need that I don't need that extra effect so I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that one let's go on let's go on over to the curves 
that's another thing I really like about these presets. You know, I could have spent the time to try to get this curve exact. This is a great starting off point. I'm actually just going to use this curve. I mean, it's really, you know, the red is just, well, you know, even the green is a kind of a low contrast you know, curve and the blue is a high contrast curve slightly. And the overall curve is, you know, really high contrast. That's what I like. Let's, you know, just take a look at this. That's a huge difference right there. I mean, if you can't see that, this looks like kind of matrix, um, the grunge, I don't know what else. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's really close to Inception. Or, you know, Inception doesn't really have a look to me. It's more of just a, the natural film look. They didn't really use too much color correction in that movie. But in this case, that's what we're going for. So that's really close. Um, so, yeah, let's look over at the warm cool. And right now, this is definitely too warm for me. Um, I don't want it to be this cool, though. So we're going to go ahead and use this. But we're going to get rid of the tint. I don't know why there's tint in there. Um, now let's go ahead and let's cool it down a little bit. We want a little bit warm. 0 0.08 is good for warmness. This, you can see this is adding a little bit more to the skin tone, the red colors, etc. It's bumping up a little bit, especially with the hand. With the hand, and that looks good to me. Um, I get in the habit of adding a shoulder. I'm gonna head, go ahead and add that to the camera. In this case, I didn't really need it because I wasn't going over one. But it kind of just, you know, equalizes everything for me. As you can see, on and off. I just get in the habit of using it. It's, it's helpful. Let's take a look at color contrast now. And this, I, I could tell right away, this is going to, yeah, that's a huge difference. The color contrast is a big part of this. There's a lot of colors in this one. So, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to bump this up a little bit more. Let's go to 0.819. And let's try that now. Oh yeah, I like that. Um, rain saturation, I don't think this is, yeah, I don't know, you probably definitely can't see it over the internet, but this is definitely, you cannot see what this is doing, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this. I don't need these e extra effects for no reason. And in fact, I'm actually going to add my own curves. I've talked about this in the past where I had to add, I like to add, you know, two, at least two curves. But in order to do that, you really need to have your stuff well lit see that you have the dynamic range to be able to do this otherwise your images is going to be super dark and crappy looking and yeah so but as you saw with the here's without all the effects it's very very it's almost it almost looks blown out it's not it's like there's nothing except for maybe over here a little bit there's nothing really it's just it's right in the middle for everything it's just everything's the same kind of like specular density i don't know the term for it but that gives me a lot of room in post to now add two curves and that gives me just even more contrast even more you know separation of okay the sun's over here it's not over here which is what we saw with that frame with ellen page and so that's kind of what we were going for and one last thing i'm going to add some film grain i actually forgot to add this for the actual um inception sketch but i'm going to add it now it's definitely something you want to add, I actually took a look at it, this is too much, 5% is too much, this is more, this would have been good for The Godfather, which I actually used for The Godfather, because The Godfather was shot in the 70s, and you know, film wasn't treated as well back then, and stuff like that, so, and it wasn't as good of quality and stuff, so, this would have definitely been okay for The Godfather, but for this one, that's way too much, I like to go between, you know, 1 and 2%, let's try 2, and you can't, I know you probably, guys probably can't see this, but, there's you can really not notice a difference and it's because it's still this is kind of a noise effect where it's gonna it's gonna, as it as you play the clip you're gonna see the noise play out so just take my word for it that this is right around where I want it to be and you're just gonna kind of want to play with it yourself watch the film yourself the one you're trying to emulate or the look you're trying to get for your original film or whatever and you just don't want to overdo it don't overdo I mean if you do this is gonna be like that's like that's it's like the grunge. I know you guys can see that. Some things actually use this. For example, uh, The Walking Dead. I feel like they really overdo their uh, film grain. And I know they're, sh they're shooting it on digital cameras, so they're just, or at least I'm assuming they are. Maybe they're not, and they're just getting that green naturally, but I think it's way overdone. Uh, so you just kind of want to, you know, not overdo it, but it definitely adds to your film look along with the, like I said, the, the desaturation, the coolish tone, the high contrast, 
24 frames per second, the aspect ratio, the shutter speed, all these things will help you demonstrate to your audience that it's, you know, that it's a film and not just shot on a DSLR. But that's it for this week. Send questions to me via at mentions on twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. Follow the show's Twitter at Film in 5D and send in your tweets for a chance to be featured next month. Also like our Facebook page at this link here, and while you're there, vote for your favorite sketch on our poll. We'll be back next week with a very snazzy review on The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, you're going to see that? Yeah, I'm going to see it. I'm not actually going to do a review, though. I have a feeling I'm not going to like it, but... It's going to... Yeah. We'll check it out. I want to see uh, Moonrise Kingdom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time this airs, I'll probably have already seen it. It's supposed to be pretty funny. I haven't seen the great BM in a while either, so it's gonna be cool to see him. BM? Bill Murray. Uh, 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 uh. See you next week. Godfather, please! No! What? That in between. <laughs> so you have, you, you have three lines. You have the one that puts me into it, which is the original one. Yeah, Godfather, please. No, no, it's. So it's what? No, it's. Yes, please. More from my oh, okay. So yes, and then later on, you said, Godfather, please, and, and, I, and I stop you. Okay. And that's because I'm saying, but this time I'm changing the lines, and I'm like, you, you don't even bother to vote for your favorite sketch? And you're like, Godfather, please, I'm like, and by favorite sketch, I mean the Godfather sketch, the Godfather in 5D. And I'll keep going on and on, and you'll say, and I'll say, so go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash from in 5D. And then you'll say, when, I, when I'm done, you'll say... What's Facebook? No. I'm trying to memorize my lines. You need to memorize what you're doing off camera.